I'm going to start off with a joke. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta recognize the egotist. They got their eyes too close together. What was that trend in the beginning of the first part? Yeah. Oh. He can hear you. Do you know how to recognize an egotist? They got their eyes too close together. So, but you hear me saying a lot of eyes in this type of egotist. Or my eyes are crossed. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So this is all spontaneous, so God's pretty spontaneous, so I just rely on, on God to speak through me, so um, Father, um, I just ask you just to download me with whatever, give me the visions, the words, um, I know my life story, scriptures, so I know if you can use a donkey, you can use me, so, so go ahead and use me, use me, I pray so, um, so the, the book of Revelation says, um, they overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, so blood of the Lamb gives us salvation in my testimony is because through that salvation, I overcome things. And my story is my story. No one, I can't conjure it up. It's my life. You know, you can say, I can go into theology or what I think the Bible says, and you can, you can argue with it. But you can't argue about my life because I know my life. And these are things I've faced and gone through and done. And um, so, what I'm doing is like, real fast life story and it might do depending where God leads me a event in my life that shows how much God loves me okay so um, you know born of course and, you know, um, I was raised Catholic pretty much and I went to Catholic school and I think a difference in my first few years in being in Catholic school was I had a relationship with God to where I could go to heaven as a kid, innocently, without being conjured up or doing a lot of whatever. Um, I understood what surrender was, forgiveness was, even though I didn't need it that much as a kid, but I, I saw the abandonment and I go into heaven and come back and knew what this love from above was like. Wow, tremendous. It made me feel whole and complete. And um, then through you go through, you get raised by your parents, through the years, um, you get introduced to like legalism. Maybe the parents don't know how to love you right. So you, did, you usually see father's love, or God through your father. My father wasn't a good loving person. So I, all I knew in my latter years that God was more of a, I'll spank you, or you're being disciplined for doing wrong. I didn't know about the love. I just knew about the discipline, you know, the meanness. So I was kind of lacking the balance of what God really is. So, but then I got an alcoholic dad, my mom too, but she came, she, it was hard to see it in her. My dad is full blown, but he's a punching alcoholic, he ran a business. Like, how, how does a person do that? Um, I found out later I couldn't do that. <laughs> but, because I'm a really bad drunk. <laughs> and a few other things. But, um, okay. So, I think it's around, I was in high school, and my dad started going to church as a drunk. <laughs> At that, it wasn't a Catholic church, it was the Assembly of God. So now we're introduced to a, another dimension of God, you know, more, more of the Bible, and less of tradition. And um, then he gets saved, but then he gets divorced too, because there's a mixture of things going on all at once. So I'm raised by my mom. Um, a funny thing happened, it's really interesting, is before my parents divorced, they said, uh, 
we're at a church meeting and the guy's calling up for healing. I had for healing, yeah. And I didn't want Jesus because I was in high school and there's the sex, drugs, and rock and roll thing, and there's Jesus. This sounds kind of interesting. I want to try it, explore, you know, do my thing. And I didn't really want Jesus. Matter of fact, I didn't think Jesus was really that real. I didn't think the devil was real either. I started making my own opinion, all my own decisions, my own judgment. Okay, um, so I went up to get healed for a hip, but I didn't want to get healed because I didn't believe that Jesus could heal me. One, two, if he did heal me, that was going to mess up my whole world because that means he's real. <laughs> and he healed me. <laughs> that was so messed up. Now I'm, now I'm in a position, I'm running from God pretty much. Either I'm denying God, rationalizing him away, and I want to do my thing party hard. But this Assembly of God preacher used a, um, he used a um, chalk talk. And so he, did, he penetrated my eyes through his drawings. He taught every single day. He drew every single day. He preached every single day. He was uh, a traveling missionary type, type of guy. And so he left. He had the book of Revelation drilled into me to where I was always in fear because he took He's telling me what all the nations should do, what the Antichrist is going to do. Um, so, like the Shah was in office, and uh, people were getting killed. Um, what's your name, Allah? This nation's supposed to do this, and there's Russia, and they're a threat to America. So I was always like, uh, this book of Revelation thing, I don't like it, man, because it's like, it's telling me the news, you know? And the news is hard happening, I'm like, God, this ain't good. <laughs> So, God, so I'm making deals with God. God, I'll party. Just give me one more day or a few more years and I'll quit. <laughs> this, let me experience this a little bit more. And I'll, but at the same time, like, this piece of crap. I'll, I'll give my life back to you. And then, um, so, sure enough, I, get, I had a born again experience in my bed over a guy that kind of like haunted me. He got born again, my party friend. And he left a track. <laughs> I get the Bible, I know something's wrong in my life. I really don't like the way I'm feeling. I'm higher than a kite. And I open up the Bible and the track feels, falls out. And I read it and it says, oh, uh, ask for forgiveness of your sins and ask Jesus into your life. Really simple. In my own bed, I did that and like, bam! And it was like, Holy Ghost hit me so hard. And these like chains of bondage were just ripped off of me. I felt so beautiful. And that love that I felt when I was a little kid came back like, woo! I was like, beautiful, man. And I'm crying and everything. And, you know, my wife, she thinks, like, those drugs are good. But, <laughs> <laughs> but so, so I get born again. The next day, my born again dad comes over and says, hey, what happened? I, I got born again, I guess. And he goes, oh, wow. The kid's closing to town. You can go see him for a week with me. And then a few hours later, my dad leaves. So I got this whole schedule. And this guy named Happy comes by and says, you got born again? Well, we've been praying for you. <laughs> He's the one that left the track, by the way. <laughs> so he goes, ah, we got a home church for you. Go, okay, right on. So there's my... My born again experience, you know, but um, uh, I was experiencing a lot of stuff, you know, tongues interpretation, miracles, signs, wonders, all this stuff was happening, and um, but there's a part of me that did change where I didn't clean house, I didn't repair the wounds of the past, things that my dad, I hear from my dad and my mom, and these scars and hurts and pain, all that kind of stuff. So, um, so when you have a little sin in your life and you don't take care of it, it'll fester. And right. it's like having a, a door is cracked open just a little bit. And the door opens wider and then the foot comes in and just, you, get, you, know, you get caught up in all kinds of stuff. Which I did. And I ended up losing, uh, I was working at Northrop Aircraft and... Drugs crept back in my life, but this time 
was way worse than the other time because the other time I was a functioning drug addict, alcoholic. I was keeping a job. This time I went to the street. I just, and I'm, you know, I'm either in three positions running from God, doing nothing for God, or running with God. And um, so I went through hell pretty much. <coughs> and this is the hell I met my wife. <laughs> and um, she gets born again because of me, but I don't want to serve God. <laughs> I want her to keep going up. <laughs> but, so, but then I get born again. I mean, I rededicate my life. So now we're like, kind of like paralleling. But I'm still, fought, I'm still got a lot of things to change and I haven't changed. And I still haven't hit it a low, too. I think the, the real big one is I didn't hit that low, the life changing low. I've hit a lot of lows. I went to prison, and get, almost got shot, stabbed, whatever, all that kind of stuff. You know, the war stories. Um, but. But I wasn't changing like long enough or something. But it's really weird just like three years ago, I could say, um, for like 15 years on paper, there was nothing about me doing wrong. But because I, I fell off the wagon, and that's at the same time like five years, I fell off the wagon and started partying again. Um, and every time I party, it snowballs really fast, <coughs> destruction. And so, um, let's see. So I did a little petty theft thing. You know, when you're on drugs and alcohol and trying to keep yourself high, all those stupid things. So I did a little petty theft thing, got caught, went to court. The judge says, you need a lawyer. I thought, for this little stupid little crime? Well, what the judge looked at was, he didn't see the 15 years where I wasn't on paper. He looked at the 15 years before that where I was always on paper. I mean, I got like a rap sheet like that, you know, like how many times I went to jail, prison, all the things I did wrong, the things they could have got me for, the things they didn't get me for. I mean, and I'm like, he's like, um, you better get a lawyer because I'm like, going to put you away. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh this, no. Because I had the 15 years of putting my life pretty much together, keeping a job and take care of the kids and all that stuff, even though I had my, my, my you know, falling off the wagon parts or my binges. Um, so, so we put a bunch of stuff together. And, you know, I, hate, I hate to use God's grace and abuse it, but I did, but I was, so I was doing pretty much. But uh, I went before the judge and the guy didn't show up and says, you missed the bullet. And it says, um, you're free. I ain't going to pursue you unless you know, something comes up. So it says, you're not guilty with prejudice, I guess. They well, could still hold it against me. But that was like, that wasn't as bad as going to prison. It was a little thing, but the, that would hurt me more than any of them. It like shook me up. And somewhere online, I can, and myself, I said, I don't want to go through any more hell, losing stuff. Um, accomplishing something and then have it all fall apart. I don't want to dig a hole no more. I'm just tired of it, you know? And so I, there's something from three years ago that's way different than ever. I mean, it's way different. It's like, I, I have, God, there's no desire for me to want to do any of that again. It's really like it was taken away, you know? I do get temptations, little temptations, like the cigarette ones. Is, cigarettes are the wickedest thing they ever tried. They're worse than heroin. <laughs> I mean, it's bad because there's so many tentacles to quitting cigarettes. There's so many ways to get going again. Um, I, I mean, physically, mentally, spiritually, habitually, um, everything. It's just so, so well surrounded. And um, so I get that one. And I recognize the sign. It's a little carrot. The little one hit could could lose everything. You know, um, one drink I could lose everything. Um, you know, just because booze, cigarette will probably lead to the booze. The booze will probably lead to drugs, and then it's, oh, I'm all off. I'm off again. Everything is destroyed. I hurt people. I hurt my wife. I hurt my kids. I hurt my mom. I hurt everybody. Everybody gets hurt. You know, I hurt myself. And um, so I don't really want, want that anymore. You know? 
know, it's just it's so far gone. And um, I say I want more time. <laughs> <laughs> Your turn fun. Huh? Oh, I can tell a horror story. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell it. I haven't told it a long time. This is the um, this is how bad it, how bad it can it was. This is one of my greatest stories. Um, my favorite one. Okay. Okay. I was like, um, these party on the avenue. They, they, I hung with like this wetbacks a lot. They'd come over across the border and they would sell their, their cocaine, whatever. And I would drive them around, they'd take care of me, you know. And I, I didn't fit into, I wasn't a gangbanger, but I was the gangbanger. I wasn't a biker, but I was with the bikers. I wasn't a, a crip, but I was with the crips. I could any in one day I could be all three of them, be with all three of those groups. It's just like, don't belong there. Don't you know, but why am I there? It's because the drugs. Um, party, that lifestyle. So I'm with this guy in the avenue and the gangbangers came out and um, it was a younger generation, the kids, I didn't know none of them. And um, they came up to the guy with all the gold and dope and all that stuff and they're harassing him. And I've been up like three days and um, they went off him to me and instead of me, he's like, if you're supposed to like you in the body, I'll say, hey, hey, Bob, hey, Bob, oh man, I, I live here, I've been here longer than you. But I was startled and I ran instead of rebuttaling these people and sparked the whole block. Man, there were bricks flying, people chasing me all over the street. And I'm running and running, and it's just like, there was like 30 of them, man. And I'm like, shit. And so I was like, I'm going to fall in the middle of the street in the ball, and I'm going to protect myself the best I can. So I'm in this ball and they're kicking me from all sides, man. And like as fast as I could say, God, you can't get me out of this one, they were gone. And that's the first time I ever doubted, I said a doubt prayer. I was like, well, I guess you can't. So I, so I stood up you know, and I'm like, they're all gone. I was like, this is real. And they go, look, you're standing up. I'm like, oh, dog, I'm running. <laughs> so I took off and I get to this fence and I try to get over this fence. I don't know why I can't get over this fence. So if I somehow get over it, I'm in somebody's backyard. I go to the front gate. I can't open the gate. I don't know why. So the guy on the other side says, what are you doing in my backyard? We're going to beat you up. And I'm like, I already have beat up. And I got blood all over the place. I don't know that yet. And I found out that this wrist didn't heal right because it got broke. And because like, we had party. Um, I didn't, think, I didn't go back to the doctor, get cast taken off and all that. So I run to this main avenue that takes you to the LAX airport, and um, cars would slow down, look at me, drive away. God, I must have looked like a mess. <laughs> they drive down, they, they pull up to me, they look, and they drive away. Finally, one guy looked at me and says, Get across the street, I'll take care of you. The next thing you know, I got ambulances, and um, next thing you know, I'm in the hospital, and they come out of the hospital to cast. I got stitches in my head, and what I do instead of waking up to this cause, I go see the same guy that I was hanging with, and he goes, man, they, they jacked you up. <laughs> I says, oh, they ain't ever going to do this to you again. He gets a gun, he shoots a bullet out the window, says, let's go. And so we get back on the avenue, and I'm like, I really don't want this gun in my car. And, um, well... We got on the, let's see. So we're on the avenue, I have a gun. Let's see. We get pulled over. They take the gun away from me, send me to jail for a misdemeanor of firearms in a car or something like that. They let me go. And then the next day, here comes a um, tow jack and his partner in a low rider car. They're undercover cops. They pull up to me and say, You're a good man? I say, Yeah. Go, well, you want you, we want you for murder. Like murder. <laughs> well, what happened was um, when they were kicking me and beating me up in the street, um, but that group left me and went down the street. Well, after God got him away from me, he went down the street and shot one of their own members called point blank in the eye. Okay. So now, when they pulled me over with that, with that gun, there was a bullet missing. Ah, suspect. And they can't get the bullet out of the guy because he's in a coma. 
So they, they you know, it's like, well, this, is, this could be the gun, this is bullet missing. The guy was out there at this time, so they did a bunch of uh, uh, record keeping and found out that I was in the hospital when the shooting happened. So that's what got me off the murder charge. But the other problem was I got out of prison on um, probation and I signed a piece of paper that if I caught with firearms, I get 25 to life. Um, so, um, but ha so what happens, I didn't get the 25 to life because I never found out, because I wouldn't be here right now. I could be still serving my time. Okay, so I didn't get 25 to life, one. Two, um, I didn't get the murder charge. And then uh, like a year later, God showed me what really happened. He goes, um, you're such an idiot. And um, I had to literally have you kicked off the street because this guy had a gun and would have used it on you. And so he, I got beat up, kicked off the street, literally, and put in a safe place. So I would have been dead for that gun was in that group. And, um, and I said, God, you can't get me out of this one. And that's why he protected me from all that. And he protected me from getting a bullet in the head, um, 25 lives, and a whole bunch of other stuff. You know, but that's God chasing me down, you know, loving me that much. You know, and um, I mean, I don't really want to go to that, you know, <laughs> it's too much, you know, I mean, so that, basically that's my story. <laughs>